Sustainable aviation fuels, or SAFs for short, will continuously replace kerosene fuel over the coming years. SAFs are made from alternative raw materials instead of being fossil-based. There are many options to produce SAF and science is quickly and constantly evolving. Current feedstocks include biological sources like used oils, agricultural or forestry residues, as well as non-biological sources like municipal waste. While SAFs still emit broadly the same amount of CO2 at the point of use as kerosene, the key difference is that they are sustainably manufactured, reducing CO2 emissions by up to 80% over the fuel's life cycle. The letter S in SAF stands for sustainable, and SAFs therefore need to meet stringent sustainability standards with respect to land, water and energy use. For example, they must not compete with food crops, threaten food security, or have significant emissions footprints from production. Since the first SAF flight in 2008, hundreds of thousands of flights have taken place using SAFs, but a lot more work needs to be done to scale production and reduce costs. Today, less than 1% of the aviation industry's global demand is met by SAF. To give you an idea of the scale of that challenge, in 2022, approximately 130,000 tonnes of SAF were produced, and by 2050, the aviation industry predicts it will need 500 million tonnes to meet its net zero targets. So, what is Rolls-Royce doing to support this? Our engines are actually already certified to fly on a 50% SAF blend, but we've been busy testing all our production Trenton Business Aviation engines on 100% SAF to prove their compatibility. This is in line with our commitment to have completed this milestone by the end of 2023. In fact, we have done this ahead of time as the last test was finished at the end of October. We are on track to deliver on our commitment to use 10% SAF across our UK civil aerospace and defence testing operations by the end of 2023. We have been using a SAF blend provided by AirBP at our facilities in Derby, Bristol and Dalewitz in Germany since July 2022. The SAF contact has also been extended to include major UK defence site at Bristol, over and above the civil commitment, resulting in less emissions associated with testing from a defence perspective. Earlier this year, we also did the first run of our new engine demonstrator at Ultrafan, and that test was also conducted using 100% SAF. Our colleagues in Defence have also contributed to this effort by supporting the RAF's first 100% SAF flight on a Voyager aircraft last year. This is a world first military aircraft demo of this size. Further proof of concept flights have also been carried out by the RAF in April 2023, including a refuelling demonstration using 43% blended fuel between the Voyager and a Typhoon powered by our EJ200 engines. Further SAF trials will continue with increased customer demand and to support customer milestones such as the RAF's ambition to reach net zero by 2040. Of course, Defence has also benefited from the vast civil aerospace testing due to some dual purpose products in the Rolls-Royce portfolio. Even today, our Trent 1000 engines are powering the world's first transatlantic 100% SAF flight on a Virgin Atlantic Boeing 787 Dreamliner. To help further take up of SAFs, we believe governments should support and stimulate cross-industry collaboration bringing together fuel producers, airlines, aerospace manufacturers, airports and the finance sector to increase production and support the reallocation of capital. We have welcomed the introduction of SAF mandates in the UK and Europe and production incentives in the US and other parts of the world. As we continue to call for government interventions to ensure that SAF can reach a price point at which its use will be universal. We believe that SAF production can be truly universal and include countries that have not previously been involved in aviation or fossil fuel production. The diverse nature of SAF feedstocks, utilising locally available sustainable resources, means no country should be left behind. We recognise that any solution in this sphere requires a commitment to teamwork, and our leadership team and other teams will continue to work closely with industry bodies, governments, fuel manufacturers and other stakeholders to ensure SAFs are central for strategies for decarbonising aviation as part of our collective net zero efforts.